Kevin. You are the child of Holocaust survivors. And now we are sitting here together. You from Israel, me from Berlin, Germany. And I'm wondering, would you share some of your stories with me? My, my mother, she was a child when the war started. She was four years old in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, they lived in an apartment building where all the apartment were the family, like grandparents, aunts, I don't know how many families in one building. When the Germans conquered Poland. Uh, they bombed Warsaw and they bombed fall on the building. And in an instant, like, most of the family was killed. Um, after this, my mother, like, the family, they had to go to the ghetto. To spend some time in the ghetto. And my grandmother, she was like the one, she, she knew very well Polish, she knew how to deal with people, she, and she understood that nothing good will happen staying in the ghetto. Like my grandfather said at a certain point, okay, let's go, because the German offered like bread and butter or bread and jam, and those who are willing to go on the transfer, so my grandmother said, you can go, me and the children are not going. Uh, so there was some time in the ghetto, I don't know many details about this. My mother got very, uh, very sick, so they found a place for her in Warsaw, in a flat. Someone hid her in there. Um, after a while, they were all together, like two parents. The family had four kids. One was killed in this first bombing. The older brother, he was like 14, 15 when the war started, but he was very independent. He spoke well Polish. He went in and out of the ghetto. He was part of the group of people who did not were, I don't know how to say it. Uh, so my grandparents and my mother and my aunt, they found a place in a farm hidden in a small hole in the, or the, in the cow's shade under the earth for some time. Uh, and then at one point, my aunt said, I can't stand it any longer, I can't stand it, I'm going back to the ghetto. Like, I'm not willing to hide here like rats. And she just went, left those relatively safety place, went back to the ghetto and got killed. No one knows exactly how. Um, after this, my mother... Like the older brother who, who could move around and who arranged another place in another farm where she did not have to hide. She was with the family as if some kind of relative. She was maybe six, seven years old then. She spent there a year. She had a fake identity. She says that she didn't even remember her real name. Anyone, like, um, after this, she moved to different places. I don't know exactly. I don't know how they found each other when the war was over. And uh, they were a lucky family, like uh, two parents and two children out of four were saved. So this is the story. I don't know many details. Like for many years, my mother did not want to tell many details.
when she was willing to tell more, I couldn't hear. I was not able to listen. Like 15 years ago, this is uh, like every year there's a memorial day for the Holocaust. So my mother said that she would like to go to the school of the kids and talk. I felt so uncomfortable about it, but okay, it was done. Then she came and talked. This happened and this happened after this, this and this, and there was one ama amazing girl who asked her, like, what did you feel when this happened? And then this happened and then that happened, yes, but what did you feel when this happened? My mother couldn't answer this question. It was impossible for her. And, uh, like, this is history, her story, at the time of the, of the Holocaust. And then, you know, she was in Israel, she was married, family, I have a brother. It was like a normal family. Okay, like, it was not a secret, the, the Holocaust, it was not present at home. Like, um, maybe later I'll tell the story of my uncle also. And um, my relationship with my mother was like, from the age of 20, 25, I could not be with her. It was like, like when I would go to visit her, my fingers would go like this, like, watching the clock all the time, when can I leave? And um, six years ago, uh, for some reason which I don't really understand, the, the level of the salt in my mother's blood dropped heavily. And this makes all the electricity in the brain go wrong like she was confused like and when I was with her at the hospital and when she was released like in a bit a better state but still completely confused she said a sentence like um, I don't know exactly how to translate it but I feel uh, the Holocaust won I need help. Like 75 years after everything happened, when all her uh, defenses were shattered, she could say this. And then uh, she was in a very bad condition. I had to spend like three weeks with her at home because she could not be alone till we found some kind of arrangement. And she was hallucinating or whatever, like, very confused. Then at one point she said, I want to write my memories. Like, I had to help her to bring her a notebook and a pen because, like, it was too much for her. She couldn't, and I didn't believe that she could even write, that she was so confused. And then she went she was writing, going back to it, and, and when I looked what she was, what she had written, it was uh, like sentences started and did not uh, finish. It was not clear. It was not. But there were a few things there. That one thing she wrote is uh, the girl I used to be vanished in an instant. I was not the same girl after this. And another thing she wrote was a bomb fell and since then it falls every day again. And this softened something in me. And I was really lucky like 
to get, without seeking it, to get some help to process the things. And I could, I could see what she, what she went through and how it affected her and like for instance before like, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago she came to visit me if she came with the train and I went to pick her up and I was late like 10, 15 mi um, minutes late and she was furious at me like and I was like holy shit like what? So I was late. Yes, I shouldn't have been late, but I was late. 10, 15 minutes. And after this process, like, I could see the small children who is alone, who is alone. 70 years before. And um, I went through kind of some kind of art therapy, very helpful. And um, I didn't know this is what I'm going. I did not ask for an art therapy. Just when I wanted to paint, and this lady just knew better what is good for me than. Uh, and at one point, she told me, "Okay, I'll, I'll teach you how to draw." You see, like, like, only with a pencil when you make something quite accurate. You draw. Okay, so I drew a bit. A very nice shade and light and, and then she told me take a picture of your mother of the face and draw her I didn't suspect anything it's drawing very interesting how to make that with just with the pencil I was all interested in this and then she told me okay now photoco photocopy this drawing and do something with it just go and paint on it or do whatever and I was like I don't know to do with it. I went home and wow things started to come out and it was like a process of four months and uh, one of the things I, I made was some kind of collage that um, all around is very colorful and happy and nice like the ring and inside is the this drawing of my mother with lots of pictures of bombs and dust and destruction and like I could really see that inside everything was kind of ruined but every morning she woke up and decided to play normal, to play life. It was just a thin layer around her. And then this lady told me to go to choose a picture of me as a child, to grow it and do something with it. And I made also a nice collage. I um, put many pictures from um, books of my childhood, very nice, very happy, and me inside. The bottom part of the collage, the base of my childhood, is my mother, surrounded by smoke, dust, and destruction. My mother, with the grief, pain, terror, loneliness and fear, she carries as her childhood memories. And I, I didn't know, I, I, till that moment I thought, yeah, my mother had passed some difficult times but it did not affect me. And I think I still don't fully understand what the effect on me is, but it's huge.
Lau, you are from Berlin. Are you willing to share your story with me? My grandfather, the father of my father, and I, uh, we were living together when I was a child. So actually I grew up with him and he was, yeah, one of the most important people in my life because he was always there and uh, we liked each other. Yeah, I loved him a lot and we understood each other quite well. This changed when I was a teenager. I discovered that he was a Nazi and for me everything changed. I couldn't really understand. I I tried to yeah to talk with him or to argue and he also tried to convince me of his beliefs and his ideology and and either way worked out. For me it was more the time of uh, getting distance and um, closing my heart towards him. Uh, I had the feeling that I was that I, I lost him. So when he actually died I wasn't that sad because I had the feeling that we were anyway already mm, very much disconnected and yeah I couldn't really um, get to my feelings of love towards him and and connection and affection but I was doing a lot of healing work in order to reconnect with my family with my parents my ancestors but also um, working through um, the collective trauma that has an impact on me as well. The impact of pain, fear, shame and guilt. It's like very huge here in Germany. And um, numbness of course, like silence. A couple of years ago I was walking on the fields and in the woods it was misty, like autumn and misty, and my grandfather appeared, his spirit of course, and we got into a dialogue and I was saying that I could not forgive him, I can just not worship him, because something is missing for me. And I told him I was very angry yeah, and disappointed. And I told him that for me is missing that he acknowledged the Holocaust, that he acknowledged the existence of concentration camps. He denied that while he was still alive. For him it was a big lie that concentration camps existed. And for me, it was important um, that he had a look at that. So actually, he agreed. I took him by the hand and we went to a concentration camp and a mass grave. And we were standing there looking down on the dead bodies. I was strong. I was very grounded, connected powerful because I knew that this was a historical moment and this was very very important in the life of my grandfather of his spirit of his evolution also my grandmother came I, I wouldn't say she was a denier but she also never made the effort and argued or discussed with my grandfather about this stuff and it was yeah it was how I thought he he collapsed he cried uh, his whole world 
um, order that he created in his mind just collapsed and turned out to be so different than what he thought. And I felt much relief in the situation, relief in him, relief in myself and relief in the whole field. Yeah, he saw and he understood that he was not right. He was wrong. And yeah, I think he was not able during his lifetime to see what he got to see now in the situation. He needed, he just needed to avoid this knowledge in order to have self esteem, in order to to make it through his life, to be a good father, to have his business, and to be a good husband and so on and so forth. And he needed someone who would go there with him and not judge him while he was facing this. Yeah. I think it was a big healing. Step by step, I am in loving peace with you, grandfather. Understanding and forgiving you more and more, and your generation, and the generation between us. Understanding and forgiving myself more and more. In self-loving peace, step by step. Grief and pain, consternation and rage will always remain as a sane human answer. But I also let love lighten my heart. No! It's not at all an easy path to face the past, but the past is part of us here and now. Griefing together, celebrating together. Our tears are the same water, our dance the same movement, our dialogue the same breath. We tear down rigid walls of silence through seeing, listening, and feeling each other. We all have heavy stones to carry and heartful embraces to share. Within me, my ancestors are still alive. Your ancestors are still alive within you. Our ancestors dance with each other through our dance. Through our embrace, they embrace each other too. Every time a little more, step by step. Our steps lead us to the tomorrow, where we are the new 